Escort him. Fortune and great joy, those capricious and inconstant ones, aid and regale forever, Ninut, our great and beloved sovereign. And also console him for the loss of their sister, Youthfulness, who has abandoned him. But beauty is always his most faithful companion. I wonder how much your flattery will cost me, Gay. Our great chancellor always finds a way to make fortune smile at him. Very well said, Sir Miramis. Gayla! This time you'll not have the last word. Go on, Samiramis. Reveal to us the secret thoughts of our great counselor. That's impossible. His thoughts are as impenetrable as the kingdom of the dead. Galus, it's your turn now. Answer her accusation. Ah, his silence is answer enough. <laughs> Now's the time. Bring wine! What have you done? This is a sacrilege. This is a sacrilege! The gods protect us from this evil omen. I stumbled. I didn't do it on purpose. Mercy! Please! I beg you! Ninurte! Have pity on Away! Me. No, I am innocent! No! No! This will anger the gods. No! No! Uh, no! Don't! Don't do this to me! No! Ah, ah, don't! Don't! No! 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 Ah, 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 ah. The sacred fire will drive away the evil spirits released when the wine was spilled. And will it defeat the army that is marching now on Nineveh? What are you saying? There are no warriors marching on us. We've no enemies in the Occident. And in the Orient, our worthy troops have defeated the Sumerians and are even now victoriously fighting the Dardanians. Are you sure? Our scouts have discovered no army to threaten our city. What's behind this? What do you know, Semiramis? I know nothing. I have a feeling. I see an army drawn up before our city gates, just there where the fortifications are weakest. And I see blood upon your robe. But it's wine. It's the same color as blood, and it has the same power as witchcraft. Guards, sound the alarm. Reinforce the defenses on the walls of the city. Look there, my noble lord. Not a fire signals danger in the night, and everything is very quiet. I believe in evil signs, and I believe in her. The city can't possibly withstand a siege. There are too many of our warriors away. It's impossible to fight a battle now. I don't want to run the risk. I obey you, my noble lord, so our men shall stand guard against empty dark. It's in the darkness that treachery hides itself. And it's in the dark that we can disarm an enemy who would otherwise destroy us. 
It's not very easy for a soldier to turn his arms against his sovereign. Although he's old, don't forget it is he who taught us the arts of war. Un re è tale in quanto guida il proprio esercito alla vittoria. But a king can ruin and turn our successes into political advantages. Ah, your success is on us, and success is that he's poorly rewarded. He was always a miser. The soldiers are with you. They're ready to carry you on their shields up to the imperial throne, and by shedding very little blood along the way. Our countrymen's blood. In any case, we must be ready for anything. Who's there? Seize them! Seize the traitors! What are you doing here? I was looking for my love. For the man who left, swearing he would never forget me. Sabiramis. If your heart is unchanged, release my men. Or else have us all put to death. Let them go. But you... I order you to. They won't try to escape without me. And I refuse to go, unless the general orders me to. For years I've been waiting for his return. Wanting only to see him. To be alone with him. Go and get some rest. I'll join you a bit later. You should give us our orders now. There is still time before daybreak. Women. You have defied death, my love, by coming here. I didn't know you were so courageous. I've learned that from you. From living beside you. Were you depressed by being alone? Very much. You have friends to entertain you and slaves for your service. And a sundial by which to measure the days and hours. But it's not the past we should be talking about now. You are right. There is now only the present and future for us. A future so beautiful it'll blot out your depression. I'll cover you with jewels. And I will share my fortune with you. And your downfall. Why do you say that? It would be a fatal mistake for you to rebel against Ninurta now and march on Nineveh. How, before I know myself, can you know what I will decide to do? And will you tell me how long you were there spying on me? It would be nothing if I were the only one to know of your plot. But the king is also aware of it. How do you know that? Don't be so trusting. There's a traitor among those who are nearest to you. Someone who wants to use your courage for his own obscure ends. It's not true. As you wish. I have warned you. For your sake and for mine. The element of surprise on which you so counted is no longer a surprise to anyone. The royal guards are ready for your attack. And your men will fall only a few steps from their homes. It wasn't for that that they followed you. And it will be for that that they will no longer follow you. You haven't yet answered me. How could the king have learned the news of my return? I don't know what the king has learned. But I can see just like anybody what he's doing. An armed patrol is coming. May the goddess Ishtar grant you well-being. And may she smile on you also, Galas. In the name of Ninurte, king of Assyria and god personified, I welcome the army which is returning victoriously. Our royal sovereign regrets that too much modesty has kept you from announcing the news of your return to Nineveh. He would have prepared the triumphal honors which you have earned. In any event, he said he would be happy to applaud your valor when you put down your arms before entering the city as the law prescribes. You may then pass before him and pay him your respects. Tell Ninurte, tomorrow at the third hour, his loyal and true army will enter disarmed into Nineveh. Ever obedient to the law and to his wishes. Yes. <laughs>
kneel down in front of the victor. I wasn't captured in battle. I was captured by trickery. There is a difference. Kneel down, you. Don't harm him. Lift your proud head, valiant Onos, and look upon your king. Rise and approach the throne. You may now take back the sword I gave you and which you brought to us victoriously. Samiramis. It is right that valor render homage to beauty. For when beauty is at the sovereign side, it contributes to his illustrious glory. You may take up the sword. You've well merited such an honor. tablets would not suffice to enumerate the enemies we killed, or the booty we won for the king. There are 20 chests of precious stones and golden ornaments, but the one that is surely the most precious contains the heads of all the enemy princes. And thus will end all those who are the enemies of Ninurti. And thus will end all who are defeated. Learn this lesson well, my boy. Two kings in chains, innumerable slaves, a hundred chariots of most precious merchandise, and many wild, splendid animals are now waiting to pass before Ninurte's throne. If the riches of this vanquished land are as fantastic as those we see before us today, great prosperity awaits Assyria. You can obtain what you desire, beloved king, because you can easily buy everything with gold. You shouldn't continue displaying a wealth which you already own, Onus. It might arouse the envy of the gods. Now you shall have your reward. For compensation due your valor, I give you half the booty you have conquered, a quarter to be divided among your commanding officers and your troops. The remainder will be distributed to the people. And the slaves, those slaves who are returned with you in chains to Nineveh and who are not to be sacrificed according to the rites are to remain the property of Onos. Now we must all render homage to the gods. So let the parade be halted and start the ritual sacrifice. Both the Dardanians and the Sumerians have fought equally well, or so I've been told. Let a duel between the champions selected by each group decide which will be the victims of the sacred fire. Who will be your champion? I select Sarak. Ah, Derek, of course. So the king of Dardania will do battle personally to protect his followers. Is there a more important duty for a king? And kill! Kill! Yeah. Asur, Bel Ishtar, O oh gods of light, may the purifying flames rise up to thee, fed by the flesh of those who do not believe in thee. So well, it is cute. 
king of the Dardanians. Get back and fight, coward! Here, fight! venture the great Ninurte, king of kings, the lord of our prosperity and lion of Assyria, personally led his royal troops forth to a new victory. And may the gods, Bel and Assur, strike down all those who dare to say that I only govern from my throne. Perhaps you're right, Galus. Our misleading posterity is a greater necessity than our deceiving our subjects. It is your wisdom and your willpower that make your victories possible. Physical presence is of no importance. Ornos is courageous and has ability. You know him well. You should know that about him. I also know he's very ambitious. He has received too many honors and too much applause since his return, and that could be dangerous. Hmm. Very likely, but useful. These honors can cause envy, and envy can cause discord. And thus do I hold them in my hand. Even those who have served you without any reward? What are you insinuating? Sometimes a king's gratitude is not equal to his greatness. <laughs> a king can't afford the luxury of gratitude, but only generosity. For that which you have done, what can I give reward you? Ask me for it. I want the province of Sachem. A province? Why do you want it? It's an area which is dry and barren. But in such a position that if one day a city were built there, it would be the key to the Orient. It is an ambitious dream that you have. What's the use of dreaming otherwise? And the problem of Nineveh, O great Ninurti? I grant Samilimus this province. She is at once a beautiful woman, greedy, inconstant, and without scruples. Which is why she pleases the fancy of her king. Dardanians make the best slaves. You can feed them on a handful of barley, and nobody can touch them at working. As I was telling you, I would buy them willingly, but I don't want to spend a lot. I want a price of 60 piastres each. Ah, the double of a slave from Numidia. Half of what I might realize by selling them one by one, but I must dispose of them very quickly. Which ones do you want? All of them. All? Why? Are you going to build a palace? Or has the king presented you with a province? There's no reason for me to receive such a rich reward. I have no designs against his throne. Nor does he owe his throne to my valor. <laughs> Tomorrow I will pay you. You will let me know how many there are. Oh, including Kier. Kier? Of course. Not him. No. Nothing can compensate me for the joy of watching him die most slowly. Since he was given to you by the king, mightn't you provoke his wrath this way? Or that of Samiramis. Did she send you to buy Kier? Tell me the truth. My poor Gaelan. Are you now her servant? I serve only Assyria, understand? 
but mounted on the back of the winning horse. This time you may find you've lost your mount, because I will not furnish Semiramis the means for satisfying her fancies or her ambitions. I've too much love for my king. And besides, I can't see that he would be of any use now. Him. You there, stop the wheel. I had him put there when he defied me. Possibly he could live a few more hours or days according to the wishes of the gods. But now, thanks to you, his death will come much quicker. <laughs> put this man outside the walls. For the beasts will devour him. I've lost my arm for you. Forget that and help me. your life. What for? A whim. Because you're strong. And because you're a king whom everyone obeys. Don't you want to be my friend? All I want is freedom for myself and my people. As long as there's any life in me, I will fight for that goal. Then anyone can be useful to you. 
Whatever ally, I can help you. On condition that at a signal from me, when the time is ripe, you help me to reach a goal for which I need your collaboration and that of your people. What is your goal? Isn't Assyria powerful enough? Haven't her frontiers been extended as far as the land of the five rivers? But Assyria is not yet mine. Lie down and let the slaves take care of you. You can't liberate a people with a body which is as bruised as yours is. Carry on. Divine Inerte, I swear I'm innocent. I admit that the doves which I sold to Nemesio all came flying back home. Do with it. It's not my fault. Imposter! Huh? You don't dare deny it, now that you've ruined my wedding feast. But they returned of their own will. I swear it. The sole, ve lo giuro. The poor little things didn't want to end up on a stick. Not only did he steal my birds, but he sold them back again without telling me they were the same ones. I didn't want to humiliate you, because not only did the doves, 120 of them, escape, but also two of his wives, which are much more valuable. Oh, you filthy dog, I'll kill you. Enough. You. A hundred twenty whiplashes will give you the right to hold on to your doves, since they seem to show you preference. It will make you think before you sell them a third time, and you will accept license in the presence of the wives who still consider you their master. It'll be a good lesson for them to learn. Take them away. No, no, no! Mercy on me! I'll die! A hundred and twenty whiplashes! It will kill me! No! No! Are there any others? I. Onos of Dera. I ask justice of my king. Speak up! Sire, I find there has been a theft in my household. One of the chests of booty? No. What I lost has both much less value and much more. But perhaps it will be rather difficult to set a just punishment. We shall see. The gods will guide me in any case. Whoever is the culprit will suffer severely for it. Because of all crimes, theft is the most odious and most unintelligent. My lord, I'm missing a slave. He was stolen to offend me. And maybe there is also an offense in it for you. Whom do you accuse? Is there proof? This bracelet which bears your insignia is the best answer to your question. Why didn't you accuse me directly? It would have been easier. Because after the favoritism you showed during the duel toward the king of Dardania, for he is the one she abducted, my lord. There are many people who would believe that I am now acting through jealousy if I were not able to present this evidence of your guilt. Not only have you taken what is mine, but you have taken him for the purpose of your pleasure, thus showing unfaithfulness to your king. Since an accusation has been made against me, this is my place. I demand the right to defend myself. It is granted. It is true. I did have Keir kidnapped. And if that is a crime, then I'm guilty. But is it stealing to take what someone else has thrown away? The slave was abandoned outside the city gate. Is it a crime to value the gift of a king? that was rejected by others to the point of throwing it to the wild beasts? Is it a crime to save the life of a man, even of a slave, if that man's a king, a living god? Kier was dying, weakened by a thousand wounds. And whoever sheds the blood of a king is doomed for all eternity. It's not I who shed the slave's blood. He was being whipped for good reason. Those who whipped him misinterpreted my orders. They have already suffered death for it. Which is just. However, didn't you order him to be devoured by wild beasts? Only to put a finish to his suffering. For I couldn't kill him with my own hand. You acted according to the law, interpreting it with much intelligence. What do you say to this, Semiramis? Nothing. I give myself up to the mercy of my lord and ruler. He will have to have a great deal of mercy. You can't deny the fact that you brought that man into your quarters, into the royal house. And you took care of him there, without the king's knowing. No. There you are wrong. Not without my knowing about it. Follow me.
You accuse Semiramis of a theft that really cannot be considered as such. And she, in reply, accused you of a crime that you have not committed. Since each of you has slandered the other, each accusation shall cancel out the other. But remaining is the doubt which you cast unjustly upon her honor, Onos. When you accused her of a betrayal that she has not committed, you must beg her pardon. If she does not grant it, I must deliver you to the public court of justice, for publicly she was offended. It is up to you. Kneel down, Onus, and repeat after me. Semiramis, marvel of the Orient. Semiramis, marvel of the Orient. I beg you to forget the injurious words I've said. I beg you to forget the injurious words I've said. And you may set whatever you want as penalty for the insults you've received. And you may set whatever you want as penalty for the insult you've received. I want the Dardanian slaves. All of them. And at the normal price. You will conduct them yourself to the province of Satchel that the king is bequeathed to me. There, they will build a city for me. The king must be deposed. And without harm to his person, let Ninurte live out his old age quietly. But he shall renounce his throne. As for Semiramis, we have got to eliminate her. You ought to be more cautious, Onos. Many indiscreet ears are listening to us here. Don't worry. These slaves will not betray us. They are deaf and dumb. Well then, what do you say? What can we do? We have no arms and no army. All that we need is another war of conquest. In that event, the king will have to make use of us once again, giving us control of the troops. I want to know whether or not you are with me. Brother, it is up to you to say that you were with us. Till now, you have been the only one who has profited from our return to loyalty. If you fail us this time, we'll make you repent. Should I fail you, before the god of Assur, I ask you who are here to kill me, for I no longer will be worthy of living. Trust us once again with your banners, Ninurte, and your empire will be enriched by a new jewel, the kingdom of Cardia. And where is this kingdom to be found? Here, my lord. A wealthy territory which borders on Dardania, the country we have just conquered. And Lycia, which you in your glory conquered. All I see is a wine goblet, and although it's made of gold, it doesn't seem worth sending out an army and spilling so much blood on us. You're so impatient to take up your swords once more, hoping to still the envy which divides you. Indeed, I'm surprised to notice that you're friends again. Our ambition is only for your glory, my lord. All too often have we embraced the goddess Ambition and I for me to submit once again to her fascination. No. No, defeat has me frightened. And victory is frightening also. For my final days, there'll be no more wars nor conquests. If we're attacked, this is tiring. Leave me, all of you. Look, I'm, I'm going to show you how to use the coach. Oh, okay, yeah. Here, stop it. Come on, try it. You've got to climb up on it. Yeah. Go on, try it. <laughs> Come on. Kick, kick your feet. Yeah, there you are. Just watch me, huh? Like this? That's a boy. See. Si. <laughs> but I told you to swim in his armor. Oh, well, one day you'll learn, too. That's enough for now. Come on, Ada. Oh, oh. Samaramus! Now, really, I can. That's wonderful. A king must be able to do everything, better than anyone, even the things that are fun. Yes.
You stay here with the other slaves, Q. I've got to go now. Can we swim tomorrow? All right. And if you don't learn to stay afloat by tomorrow, I'll let you drown. But, Q, don't you ever kneel? Yes, before gods. Well, aren't I a god yet? <laughs> don't be in such a hurry, eh, Dad? Being a god can be an awful nuisance. That's a secret between gods. Till tomorrow, Kier. You'll see I won't drown. Goodbye, eh, Dad. How sturdy are these boats? How sturdy? Sturdy enough to shoot the rapids. Then they could be sailed all the way to the sea. Sure they could. But careful that you don't let yourself be seen by any of the guards. They're placed all along the river. Just in case that's what you're thinking of doing. The horn! Kill! Kill! I heard it. And also saw everyone throw himself to the ground. I don't understand why. <laughs> Those who have looked upon me unclothed without my permission have their eyes gouged out. Did you know that? And those who have had your permission. I suppose the next day you had them killed. cruelest woman I've ever met. Also the most beautiful. And the most desirable. Oh, Asher, oh my lord, what will become of the Siri at my death? Adad is still only a child. Whom can I trust to govern her? Oh, listen, Inorte. The great god Asur answers through my lips. A woman will lead Assyria into greater prosperity and glory. And one day your son will be the king, Samirimus. But she's dishonest and faithless. And like all women, she's given to passion and weaknesses. But she is the only one who loves Adad. The only one who can protect his throne. People of Nineveh, the great Ninote, king of Assyria. Master of the winds, ruler of the skies and the seas, God personified, in his exalted wisdom has decided to take as his wife, making her queen of Assyria, Semiramis, holy daughter of the god Assyria. She will stop at absolutely nothing to get what she wants. But at every step she will find me in her way. Everything's changed. Nothing is changed. A solemn vow is about to unite you to another man. In what capacity do you expect me to stay here with you? Answer me. Your weapons are more cruel and pitiless than those of Onos. You should have let me die, rather than deprive me of all human dignity. It's not You've true! You've let me forget my people and my duty. 
You've sweetened my captivity. With many privileges I've no right to enjoy while my people in chains were under your whips building your city. So that your name would be long remembered in history. Our name, Kier, not only mine. I know what I'm saying. I'm ambitious, it's true. I want power, yes. But to share it with you. One day, not far off now, when Babylon will have risen in all her glory, we will rule over a big empire. Our two peoples united. Make fresh conquests. You talk as if the king were already dead. But Ninerte is old. It won't be a long time before he takes his place among the gods. Sometimes you horrify me. You'd walk over a dead body to get what you wanted. And when a man is no longer useful or needed... I have him killed the next morning. I know. You have already accused me of that. Do you remember? But how many dawns have come and gone and witnessed a love that is my only real reason for living. I love you as I have never loved anyone. Of the two of us, it is I who am the slave. Give me proof of your love. That's all. You are a king and the son of a king. You have never known the horror of poverty, the sting of humiliation, the pleasure of triumph. If you had known these things, you would never ask me to give all this up now. Then be prepared to give me up. Give me time to think. Then, whatever I decide, I won't have any regrets. You mustn't go. At least, not now. You might be seen. Wait until night has fallen. Hold me in your arms. Make me forget the scheming of the past and the uncertainty of the future. One favor, I beg of you, let the king's punishment fall on me alone. You certainly are stupid. Who else do you think it would fall on? Take him away! Keep moving. Why don't you shoot? You know, you're the one that's supposed to shoot first. No, you're supposed to because you're the oldest. No, it's because I'm the oldest that it shouldn't be me. It shouldn't be me who spills royal blood and is damned by the gods. I order you to shoot. He won't get very far. I'm willing to say we killed him if you are. And who isn't going to believe it? I'll give you anything you want, except any conditions. But give him back to me. And why do you believe that he is in my possession? It's obvious. There was an open account between you. And you have settled it to your advantage. Wouldn't I have every right to do so? Wasn't I made to kneel down before you, and all because of a slave? I am kneeling before you now. 
Have me flogged if you like. But give him back to me. I am at your mercy. Defenseless. Humiliated. What more do you want? Nothing. Why am I still in love with you? Knowing what I know. You have a power from which I cannot liberate myself completely. Yes, I was jealous of Kier. Passionately jealous. I wish I could have killed him. But the king put him to death. The king? That's impossible. It can't be true. To the king, I'm only an ornament to be shown off. Like a jewel. Or a precious garment. He doesn't care whether I'm faithful to him or not. It didn't matter when you were only his favorite. But now you're going to be married to him. You will be the queen of Assyria. And the head of Kir is the price that you must pay for your ascension to the throne. No. I don't believe it. If you want me to, I will prove it. Tell Marduk to make Ariba tell his tale again, before carrying out my orders. Are you serious? Did you have the courage to kill him? With my own hands. I drove my sword straight into his heart, like this. Look, do you see that? It's covered with his blood. May I, sir, protect you? May he protect Ninerti? He's the one who ordered me to kill him. What are you saying? He's responsible. This tunic, it belonged to Kier, but now it's mine. Cursed old fool. Vile and ungrateful wretch. Why didn't he have me killed instead? It would have been better for everyone. I really ought to enjoy your sorrow. Seeing you defeated. But on the contrary, I pity you. And I'd like to help you. For what? For vengeance. How generous of you. Not at all. I act for reasons of my own. When you will rule alone on the throne, you will find that you need me. Our two ambitions can make our country greater than she is now. I see that your tears have finally dried. Now I recognize, Samiribus. What do you want me to do? The plan is that my men will enter the palace on the day of your marriage. And as soon as you are proclaimed queen, it will be child's play to dispose of the king and his followers. I have told you my plan. It is now up to you to help me or betray me. Decide. I'll help you. I've done it. The one who killed Kier has already met death. Here, these things belong to you. Here. Take this ring. It will be the pass for your men to enter the palace. And the beginning of my vengeance. Pass through.
Where's Koravi? Over there. Ninorte, emperor of the world, master of the winds, ruler of the skies and the seas. Until today, but no longer, for he has dared to raise to the throne one who is unworthy. Renounce the crown, Ninorte. You are old, and Assyria must have a sovereign who is youthful and daring. Someone who will lead her to the glorious destiny the gods have planned for her. And who will rule in my place? You, Onus. And why not? There's no one more capable than I. I do not agree. As a god personified and king of Assyria, before you all I proclaim that I'm married to Semiramis, making her from this moment queen and heir to the throne, until the day that my son has reached the age for governing. You must use more than words if you hope to keep your power, Ninurte. You will need force, and force is on my side. Enough, arrest the rebel. As you can see, these soldiers obey my orders. They are my men. It is useless to resist. Guard! Guard! Keep on going. I can't go on. It's not possible. It would be madness to stop now. This way! Courage! Only one more step. Don't let him escape! Hurry! <laughs> Kill them all! Don't let them get away! Bolt the door! Coming here. Don't be afraid, Adad. I'm here with you. Take Adad and go. May Asur guide your hand.
You, Kalos. No. by the General Onus. Kill him! It was a sacrilege! I swear to you that he will be brought to justice and that he will pay with his life for this atrocious deed. Kill him! Adad is your new king. Until he reaches his majority, it was the will of Ninurti that Semiramis, his wife and consort, is to rule over Assyria. Light of the sun are gifts which my master, the pharaoh of Egypt, sends to celebrate the second year of your reign and to show his admiration for your majesty. Word of your unparalleled beauty has reached his ears and it is to that he pays homage, offering you an alliance the value of which you know. I thank you for your gifts and admire your eloquence, but words too often caress the ear and dull the intellect. Therefore, I ask you to give me time to reflect on what you've said. The Pharaoh's offer is most flattering to me. It means that the victories that my troops have won abroad have not left him indifferent. Just as I am not indifferent to the news that the fertile lands of the Nile are threatened by rebellion from the north, led by your brother Terelatus. It is only a modest rebellion. A handful of soldiers could repress it. Exactly so. Therefore, it would be useless of me to send my troops to face dangers and discomfort where they're not needed. I, Semiramis, am not afraid of death or of war. I love life and therefore peace, an active peace, full of prosperity for everyone. And what shall I report to my lord, other than that your intelligence is as great as the splendor of your loveliness? That I expect concrete proposals from him. I want to know what advantages he has to offer me. For forming the alliance? No. For not forming an alliance with his enemies. And remember, neutrality should be more heavily rewarded than intervention. In war, I win glory. And glory has no price. It wasn't the dove who was your nurse, as people say. It was the eagle. You have guessed my secret. I leave it to you to hand it down to posterity. What other news is there? Onus has once again been defeated. That's no news. We have routed him well a dozen times, he and his miserable little army of mercenaries, leagued together with rebel princes. Many times already you would have captured and killed him. Why haven't you done so? 
Onus is useful to me alive and free. He is my excuse if I have to wage a war. A soldier who is fighting for an ideal is worth two. And what better ideal is there than fighting a traitor? Credo che il mio maestro Ninurte sarebbe fiero di me. Come io sono fiera della mia creatura. Babilonia. Your Majesty, this is how your city will look when it is finished. Gleaming in gold and decorated with many colored riches. I want each terrace to be a garden, filled with sweet-smelling flowers. The region of Babylon is very dry, Your Majesty. I don't think there will be enough rainfall to keep flowers alive. Have water brought up from the river? Impossible. Nothing is impossible. Are you not the greatest architects of the East? It is for you to find a way. When will Babylon be finished? It will take some time yet. How long? Perhaps two years. Too long. Increase the number of slaves until you have as many as you need. Your Majesty, nearly 15,000 pairs of robust arms are working day and night without stop, in addition to the Dardanians, who began the work by digging the trench around the city. Are they still there? Those who have survived, but they are not numerous. They can all die from first to last, but Babylon will be finished by the twelfth moon. But your majesty, Enough. I... Get out, all of you. What I have ordered must be executed. I know who is in your thoughts, but it is useless. Try and resign yourself. I can't. I can't forget him. I know it's foolish to go on hoping he's still alive. But his body was never found, and I... Don't look at me like that. Tell Renusa the soothsayer to come this evening. I want him to read the stars again. Yes. 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 You must calm your anxiety, I tell you. The signs show he is still alive. Where is he? That, that is not written in the stars. You damn fake. I'll have you put to death like the rest of your kind. Have him thrown over the cliff. No, no, no. If you do that, you will cause the thread of your hope to break in two. And you will need all the hope you have in order to live. I no longer have any reason for life. It is a death sentence from which I can no longer escape. But it's your own fault because you do not believe enough. What is there left to believe in? In the stars. You must listen. They tell the truth. You're going to go on a long, long voyage at the end of which you will surely find your happiness. What is my destination? Listen to your heart, it will tell you. Trust the stars. should have known. The only way to escape from here is by death. Sound the alarm. We must find the other one who is attached to this chain. He's probably trying to escape too. Have you lost your senses? Do you know what you're doing? You have no hope of escape. I can't stand it anymore. 
here, I would rather die trying to escape than go on living in this hellhole. I came into this hellhole of my own free will to give you courage to resist until the day of our liberation. A day that I'll never see. You're wrong. Come. Come with us. Be careful, Kier. Here they come now. hasn't tried to escape, therefore you have no right. Who are you to dare speak of my rights? I am... a prisoner like the others. But certainly, I know this one. It was 13 moons ago he was captured. He came up one day to the camp. He said he was looking for his brothers. Did you find them? These are my brothers. And you'll die with them. You're all accomplices in this attempted escape. You there! The commander wants you. What's the matter? The queen is arriving tomorrow. That's fine. Your executions will be good entertainment for her visit. The manner in which I receive you, my queen, is not worthy of you. If only I had been told in time of your arrival, I would have arranged to receive you with honors. I did not come to Babylon to receive any honors. My visit has only one purpose, and that is to meet the men who have laid the foundations of my city. How many of them are there? One hundred and eighty-five. Are they all Dardanians? Yes. Why are you interested in them? Only work slaves, filthy and repulsive. They were once valiant soldiers. It is we who have reduced them to this state. your king? If your highness doesn't know that already, what makes her think that we would know? Oh! Stop! You can force him to serve you. You can punish him for not doing his duty. But you cannot make him love those who have taken his freedom. dozens of prisoners, and not one of them has been able to tell me what I want to know. Your voyage, O oh Queen, has not yet come to an end. You are too impatient. Get going! Fast now! Go 
toward the throne and let her see you. Perhaps she will spare us if she recognizes you. Have you forgotten she tried to have me killed? She'd be happy to see me die. Move on! Move on! Who are they? They are slaves who have tried to rebel against us and who are to be punished now by death. Executions. I grant you my pardon. Do not make me repent of my generosity. Attack! Away, my queen. Why? Perhaps the happiness you promised me is death. Rebel slave! Rebel against your guards! Thank <laughs> you. 
A great deal is owed all of you. I will not forget it. Just as I have never forgotten the man who has proved he deserves my trust. Liberate all those still in chains. Together, you will escort me back to Nineveh. Everything is ready. Today, for the first time in months, I feel alive again and happy. But you're not. Something is the matter. What, Kier? When the icy fingers of death have touched you, it's not easy to forget. What must I do to convince you of my love and my loyalty? Haven't you seen my generosity to your people? But so many others suffer. Soon they will be freed, all of them. That's a queen's promise, and nothing, and no one can oppose my will now. Then you've made the right decision. No love is worth a throne. friendship there is between us. But we've always been friends, haven't we? Haven't we, Kim? Yes, Ada. Always. Your king will receive all the honors that are due his rank. He will no longer be a slave, nor a subject of Assyria, but a faithful, respected, and beloved ally. Long live the queen! Long live the queen! Long live the queen! A long life. Here it's coming! Here it's coming! Hey! Here it's coming! Look, 300 dark angels just arrived today from the mines. Another thousand have already left the compounds along the Euphrates. They should be here in six days. After that, more will come. More than enough to build a mighty army. But we have no weapons. It is true that we've reached many wagons filled with provisions and fodder for the horses, but you can't mix fodder into arms. Have patience. In the meantime, continue preparations as if returning to Dardania. But Kier shouldn't... Do as I say. My friend, even if I haven't been here sharing the hardships of camp life with you, I have not forgotten my people. Look. A broadsword! Yes! A broadsword! And there will be thousands more, just like this one here. This one is beautiful. How do you like it, Galus? Majesty, there's the question of leech. Oh, later, Galus, later. You're right, my friend. Forgive me. You may go, all of you. I'll look at the rest later. Sometimes I almost forget to be queen. You have completely forgotten. You dare to criticize me. Who do you think you are? Only a man who for love of his people murdered his king, his own sovereign. A man who is now afraid 
that distractions could cause you to compromise our destiny. Assyria has routed all her enemies. She has extended her borders. Nineveh has become a rich and powerful city, the only real center of trade in the East. And very soon, Babylon will be no less great. Doesn't that satisfy you? You are also responsible for it, you know. Doesn't the thought of this great achievement make you feel proud? It's the future that I'm worried about. There is no danger to any of our frontiers. There is an enemy who is dangerous to us, much more dangerous than any attack. Where? Within yourself, in your own heart. I'll have you arrested, thrown into chains. You may do so. You can even kill me if you want. But this time you will not bend destiny to conform to your will. So you think you are the arbitrator of Assyria's destiny now? No. No, not I. But the king of Dardania could be, unless you open your eyes in time. How foolish I've been. Why? To doubt you and your love. Forgive me. No, don't ask forgiveness. You were right. Something did come between us. And it wasn't distance or misfortune. Or jealousy. That poisoned my heart. My rival was a throne. You loved more than you loved me. And have I changed now? No. I've changed now. I am no longer dominated by that passion that drove me into your arms. I can now understand you. I can now appreciate your actions. And I'm grateful to you. Not only did you save my life, but you taught me what it is to be a real king. You sound as though you're trying to say goodbye to me. <laughs> Never. You are my woman. You will remain with me. Always. Where? In the woods of your country? Beside a campfire? Under an open sky? No. Here, in this palace. On a throne that cannot be equaled anywhere in the world for splendor. As the wife of a king. Who will have no rivals and no enemies. Because his very name will cause the world to tremble. You care? Yes, I. You once told me that you would share power and glory with me. And so it will be. You are the one who said that I was the master, you the slave. And so it will be. Just as it will be the Dardanians who shall rule Assyria. Have you thought this over carefully? Yes, for months. While I was in that hellhole with my people building your city. And here, satisfying your whims and humiliating myself by being a plaything for you. I must have been blind not to have seen it. And deaf to the warnings of my people. And how do you expect to carry out this ambitious dream one day? Not one day. Tomorrow. There is an army waiting outside the walls of the city. And by dawn, my commanders will arrive. They have their final instructions. And by sunrise, Nineveh will be mine. And so you see, you couldn't betray me, even if you wanted to. And why should I? You won't be taking anything away from me. If it is true that you love me. Do you still doubt that? If anything, it is Adad you're cheating. The poor child will suffer more from disappointment in you than in the loss of a throne. He has immense faith in you. He is not my son. The heir to the throne will be my own flesh and blood. Our flesh and blood. If anything, here. I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. Tan, it is not yet dawn. 
wait. I want to drink a toast with you. To our future. You are right. You have become a real king. Ambitious, without pity. Suspicious. I was not mistaken. The act of treason which these men were about to commit has broken the heart of your noble king. But not the ties that bind your people to the throne of Assyria. From this day forth, young Adad, the living God, appointed by Kir as his successor, will be your new ruler. I am sure that you will serve him with your customary loyalty. I deliver these traitors for just punishment, to vindicate the death of the great Kier, and to placate the anger of the gods. Proceed with the sacrifices. Stop! have been good to me. They have put an end to my grief. Galas, you are condemned to go on living for Assyria. Help me up. Lay me down beside him. That is my place now. She was a great ruler of Assyria. Don't forget that, Adad. Rule so that you are worthy of her.